Hey lovely freaks, welcome back to the podcast. I'm your host Amanda. And I'm Hannah. And if you're new here, hello. If you like things strange and unusual and true crime, you can go ahead and hit that follow button or subscribe button. You can also head down to the description box and you will see a link which will take you to all of our social media, Instagram, Facebook, all that jazz. And all that jazz. (laughs) Yes. If you hear a bunch of cars, kids yelling, birds, things like that, we're outside today because it's a beautiful day. It's like 60 something degrees. So we wanted to come outside. And we're doing this during the day, <clears throat> which is also unusual. Usually yeah. it's at night after you get off work, so it's kind of nice. It's kind of like more it. peppy. Yeah. Maybe we need to start doing that more often so we'll be awake. Yeah, because sometimes <laughs> I'm like zoned out and I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> what are we talking about? <laughs> Okie dokie. So um, this is going to be an interesting episode. So unlike our other episodes, Hannah will be doing one story and I'll be doing another. These are small stories. They're kind of like legend stories. Um, If you saw the title, then you know what we're going to talk about. One, I'm going to be talking about the Casket Girls of New Orleans and she's going to be talking about the Mothman. Mothman. Yes. Ha! Okay. (laughs) You did that earlier, so now I gotta do it. Some people get it, some people won't. Um, So yeah, we're going to be talking about that. I'm trying to think if there's anything... um, to say you guys enjoyed our last episode yep. thank you for everybody who liked our new logo i know i didn't say anything about it last time i kind of forgot but yeah we have a new logo and um it's the back of my head yeah <laughs> it's the back of her head and pretty much all of them but whatever um we just didn't want to because some people were like why didn't you show your faces and i'm like well it's mysterious you know and then it's also be- i was happy about it i was like yay <laughs> don't see my face thank you and um so yeah, yeah, I did take those pictures for anybody that was wondering, and I at the very bottom of our description box. Um, wait, when you click on our description box at the very bottom of our link tree link, there is my Instagram for my photography page. If you want to go to that, cause some people are asking. So anywho, um, we'll get started. Do you want to go first? Do you want me yeah. to go first? Okay, I can go first. Hannah's gonna go first, and she's gonna talk <coughs> about the, the Mothman. Man. All right, so the Mothman is seen to be a large, 10-foot winged creature with glowing red eyes. He was seen first on November 1966 in West Virginia. Two gravediggers working in a cemetery spotted the Mothman. At first, they said he seemed like a strange man-like figure in the trees above their heads. After that, a couple a couple of days later, these two couples were driving near a military um, munition site? Munition site? Munition. Like, yeah. where they do, like, Where's testing that? and stuff. Oh, testing. Okay. Yeah. Um, from Point Pleasant said they saw a creature-like large winged who almost seemed like a man, but when they looked closely, he had similarities like a moth. After those sightings, the newspapers started writing about more people seeing this creature, they now called the Mothman. Throughout the next year, witnesses were still seeing the Mothman. Many locals say that they believe the Mothman was a part of some secret escaped project of government experimentation because there was a vacant nuclear power plant outside Point Pleasant. Yeah, Point so, Pleasant's got a lot of, um, they did a government. show about Point yeah. Pleasant too, and it's got a lot of like weird uh creature like sightings, sightings there that's what i saw too and a lot of them were saying because of the government like there's a lot of government stuff also absent government stuff that's still there yeah that was there like in the 50s and 40s i'm just like mm, juicy um however the sightings came to a halt in december 1967 after a horrible horrific tragedy in point pleasant the Silver Bridge collapsed under the weight of heavy rush hour traffic, killing 46 people. But after much investigation, they said that it was because of a uh, faulty chain. Coincidence? I think not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, like, I know that, yeah, the, the, weird, the crazy thing about that, this doesn't have anything to do with the Mothman, but after yeah. they did the investigation, like, um, there was one 
like chain link that was messed up on the bridge and that's yeah. what made it collapse like that's scary as shit to think about like yeah. these bridges out here and like, when <laughs> they were saying at first it was just because of like a lot of traffic i was like but that's stupid to fall for yeah. but then when they started investigating it was a chain and i was just like mm, suspicious and also like the other day i was underneath a bridge waiting on traffic light and I just was, like, thinking to myself, if this collapses, like, if I hear, if I see, yes. like, if I see dust fall, I will like, literally I'm going to run out of run my, car. my car and just start running. <laughs> Even like, if it's, like, no. nothing, people are going to be like, what the fuck is she doing? Yeah. And Get then out. just leave the car, then yeah. there's a bunch of traffic. Yeah. Ma'am, what were you doing? <laughs> uh, many theories started to arise after this, even a writer in 1976 named John Keel wrote a book called The Mothman Prophecies. Yep. Saying and it's also a movie. A movie, yeah. It started, uh, I will get to that. It started like, they started a movie after the book. Mm-hmm. Saying that the bridge collap- collapsing was a link to the Mothman. Mr. Keel said that the sightings of Mothman were actually bad omens. And that's why the bridge collapsed. After that, in 2002, the book was made into a movie called The Spooky West Virginia Legend. And it expo- it, it, it explained at around... Uh, no, it exploded around the world like the movie exploded around the ro- world. Mm-hmm. Everyone was now talking about the legendary Mothman and the theories connecting to the bridge, which actually, I just don't... I don't know. Like, I don't think the bad omen because of the Mothman was because There was of another it. thing that happened. There was a bombing that happened, and I can't remember where it was. But they said that the bombing... Gosh, where was it? Ugh, that's going to drive me insane. Maybe it was the... Something. I don't know. It was some bombing somewhere in the 90s, and they mm-hmm. said that before the bombing, they saw the Mothman flying around. Yeah. But then in... And then in uh, 9-11, they also claimed that... Um, yeah, because of the, the bad, Mothman. They saw the yeah. Mothman. Like, people say that they saw the Mothman Like, stuff just that. started happening. Yeah. Like, after. Some people know. think, what if he... What if he's real? Which I'm not saying he is. But some people think if he's real, what if he's, like, warning people? Or what yeah. if he's starting these catastrophes? Yeah. Some, think, some theories I saw that they were saying that... Like, I saw something where it was, like, he was a demon. Mm-hmm. Like, a moth demon. And yeah. if you see him, like, bad things will start to happen. Apparently, like, he okay. has red glowing eyes, long legs. Long legs, yeah. And a wingspan. And he, his torso looks like a man. Is that yeah. correct? Yeah. And they were saying he was, like, kind of furry like a moth. Yeah. I was like, oh. Could just be a man dressed up as a moth. He's just <laughs> sitting there, like, haka! And then we were like, oh, Mothman? <laughs> Yes, it is me. <laughs> like, yeah, oh, but okay. there there has been people that said that they've saw him shoot up into the air. air so. Yeah, but anyways. Okay, so <laughs> after this, after that, the small <laughs> town of Excuse Point Pleasant started to embrace the legend of the Mothman, even having festivals starting in two thousand two and installing a twelve foot metallic statue of the creature in two thousand three, and even opening the Mothman Museum, which I really want to go there. Yeah, that'd be fun. And the the research center in 2005 which that would be uh, what is like i want to know what the museum is what it looks like Mm. just uh, i mean do they have like mothman like stuff (laughs) around i don't know they have like a mothman um like they uh what's it called ah they like dress up as a mothman oh yeah i'm mothman Um, okay, so after He's that, actually a superhero, guys. That's what yeah, we're that's getting Yeah, that's what at. it is. <laughs> like, he was actually a superhero, and then they're like, oh, man, it's, I'm not a legend. I wanted to be a superhero. Yeah. I'm not a demon, damn it. <laughs> Some people say that the sightings were maybe just a large owl that wasn't native to the area. And some say it, w- it could have been the migration of the Sand Hill Cranes. Which, if you see a picture of the Sand Hill Cranes, and we'll put those. one, we'll put a picture on there. They yeah. kind of look like, yeah, I mean, they're... Large, I like I see, him. yeah, they're, they're big. And then the owl thing, I was like, but it would have to be, that would be creepy, too. If it was, like, a huge owl... That was like a the size that of would a man. Be, that'd be that more would be more terrifying. Worse. Than yeah, <laughs> I'd be like, uh, okay. Yeah. Though Mothman sightings have decreased since the 1960s, there has been a photo that was taken by a man driving through Point Pleasant that made headlines in 2016. 
Um, I didn't really get much description of like what the photo is, though. And so there's the it. crane, and there's mm-hmm. a picture of the Mothman. That's the picture oh, of the photo. Oh, okay. That just... It looks like a flying monkey. It, it looks like <laughs> the monkeys from the Wizard of Oz. It just looks like a man who's got wings. Yeah. But, I mean, mm-hmm. if you look at their legs, they yeah, kind of look, they look knobby. And if it's similar. in the... See, I mean, that's big. Yeah, that's like the size of a man, I'd have to say. Yeah. That and looks very similar. Fully, yeah. The crane is what we're talking about. The Mothman was also mm-hmm. spotted in Chicago, leading some people to believe he is moving closer to the city. He's like, I'm done with Pleasantville. I'm going to move yeah, to the Point city. Pleasant. Point Pleasant, I'm moving to the city. <coughs> Here's the statue. Cool. the statue. The statue. The statue. The statue. The statue of the Mothman. That looks really cool. Yeah. It's pretty neat. Um, maybe. Uh, but some people think that maybe there is, like, two Mothmen. Maybe there's more. That's the other thing with the theory, like, what if it's a demon's? Yeah. Which I thought that wasn't... I was just kind of like, mm, I don't know about the demon thing. I hope that nobody can hear the... Person mowing person in the background. Person mowing. We just gotta mow. It just rained. Whatever. Um, wow. Thanks, guy. You're, You're great. It'll just be... It'll just be a great think, I actually think he's stealing something. He's not mowing. Anyways. Um, yeah, so... Some people think also that it's an alien. Yeah, I, heard, I saw that too. That some people think it's some kind of alien creature, which that would be really or like an weird in, if it was like, like something. Yeah, if it was like a Mothman like alien. I think that's what the guy. Planet. I've it's been a long time since I've seen the Mothman prophecies movie. It's got Richard Gere in it. And, yeah, I saw um, I saw a tr- uh, not a trailer. It's a good but it's, it's a good movie, it. but it's been a while since I've seen it. So I'm pretty sure in that movie, if I remember correctly, which I might not. There, it has like something to do with like disasters that are fixing to happen, mm-hmm. and they see the Mothman. So <clears throat> that one is, and kind of from the book, the Mothman prophecies, like that guy. I can't think of what you said his name was, but uh, Keel, Mister Keel. Yeah, he says that he's like for sure. Like his theory is that he is a interdimensional being that you know travels through time. Time, and, yeah. You know, something like that. Which kind of sounds like something from Doctor Who, to be yeah. honest. That would be something. Would I be wish something. Doctor Who would do an episode of that. That would be really cool. <laughs> yeah. They've done many episodes <clears throat> with, like, lore and theories. So. Yeah. But that's about it. It was really short, to the point. Yeah. I was like, that's it? Okay. Well. That's why I figured we could do two today, because, you know, that wasn't long enough. I mean, we're at uh, 12 minutes. Yeah. So. <laughs> I was like, yeah, yeah, thank God we're doing two, because that was, like, super short. Yeah. Okay, so mine is about the casket girls of New Orleans. So I didn't actually know anything about this um, until I came across it somewhere. I don't remember. But anyways, and I started looking into it. So it's kind of cool. It kind of deals with like vampires, I guess you could say. Um, But we're kind of going to go over the girls and the theories and all that. So the casket girls, or the casket girls of New Orleans... Is what they were called when they arrived to the port of New Orleans. These women were brought to New Orleans. <clears throat> I want to say New Orleans, but I can't. These New women were brought to New Orleans. I gotta Nolans. say it that way. Sorry. <laughs> um, they were handpicked by the Bishop of Quebec on the orders of the French King. And the French King at the time, I believe, is Louis uh, the Fourteenth, King Louis the Fourteenth. All the women were of appropriate age to reproduce. And they had good backgrounds as well. They were too... There were, like, too many men in the French colonies that were being made uh, in New Orleans. So, they didn't have enough women. So, they decided to get these women that the king had, like, approved to come to the U.S., come to the New World, so they could marry and have babies and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Upon arrival, the women walked down a wooden plank off the boats, each holding a tiny coffin... I say tiny, but let me like rephrase the that. Size of the them? size, kind of like a coffin type chest. Okay. They could carry it in their hands, and all their belongings were in these chests. That's not weird at all. When the townspeople saw these girls, rumors started flying. The girls were very pale. Some even said that they could be in the sun for just a minute and their skin would turn red and blister. Like a redhead. <laughs> 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, the women were taken to the Ursuline Nuns Convent, which is still there in New Orleans today, where they would remain there until they got married. The casket girls is what they were called. However, were not treated good, like, at all. Some were that were picked to be married. Some of them had good marriages, but uh -huh. the majority of them that were picked to be married, they were married to abusive men that would beat them. Some of them that weren't picked because, you know, the men back then were like, mm, I don't want that one. That one's ugly. Yeah. You know, she's a redhead. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> whatever. I'm a yeah. part redhead, but, but anyways, like, my point yeah. is, is back then, like, yeah, I mean, you could have the slightest. Like that uh, scene from New uh, Emperor's New Groove where he's like, not you. Not yeah. You. I bet basically. you have a great personality. <laughs> yeah. So those women, unfortunately, started doing prostitution because there was really nothing else for them to, like, do. And they kind of, like, lived on the streets as well. The French king, Louis the Louis the Fourteenth, um, mm -hmm. he was pretty pissed about this because he sent these girls to get married and to colonize and you know thrive for the community yeah. and that's not what's happening so he was mad and he wanted them to return home immediately however rumors bleh, well, rumors started well, circulating <laughs> that the girls were also maybe vampires mm -hmm. since many deaths had begun to occur when these women had arrived including infant deaths which were at an alarming rate, and um, other deaths, too. Some of reports would say that the deaths were, the, the bodies were drained of the some blood. of their blood. Yeah. But that was just, it's kind of like a rumor. Okay. Um, however, I was telling Hannah, I was like, you know, what if we did that now? Like, what if when COVID, yeah. <laughs> like when COVID started, we were like, it's a witch! <laughs> It was a curse. <laughs> the witches. Burn your neighbor's yeah. houses. Like, the babies could have just been dying because maybe, you know, a disease world, came about. Really. They're in the new world. Yeah. I mean, they could have actually brought diseases over on these ships and not known it. So, whatever. Um, so, the nuns in the Ursuline convent, I guess, I, I think I'm saying that right. Um, they did not want the girls to go back because they were scared that they were not human or that they were, you know, something not of this world or maybe even like demons or witches or whatever. They decided to take their casket-shaped chest boxes to the third floor of the convent. The third floor of the convent was sealed. The windows were sealed and the doors were sealed and it wasn't used and you also had to have a key to get in. However, a short time after they placed these casket-like boxes in the rooms of the third floor, the nuns came back to find the belongings missing and the boxes open and scattered all about. And the belongings of the girls weren't in there. The nuns feared that it was true that these women were not actually women. And so after this, they decided to bolt the door shut <laughs> and nail the windows shut to the third floor. They also had the Pope himself come bless the nails and the bolts before he himself mm -hmm. drove them into the uh, windows Cas and the yeah. caskets, caskets and all that. In 1978, there were two paranormal investigators. I don't know their names. I don't even know if this is true. This might be just like a a rumor. rumor yeah. But there were two paranormal investigators who actually lost their lives investigating this okay. story. Mm -hmm. So they camped outside on the street of the convent because they tried to get on the convent, but of yeah. course they were sh like shunned away for loitering or whatever and told to leave. Mm -hmm. um, they weren't exactly... We don't exactly know what happened, but the next morning after they spent the night on the street, um, the shutters and the windows of the convent, like, that were bolted shut mm -hmm. or and nailed shut, they were wide open. The investigators' bodies were found the next morning as well. Their bodies had been torn open by what looked like animal claws, and mm -hmm. all the blood had been drained from their bodies. At this point, everyone in the town pretty much was like, okay, yeah. Yep, it's the women, they're vampires. Coincidence, <laughs> I think not. Yeah. Um, obviously, this is a rumor 
all of it, kind of. There's no evidence to support that these women were vampires. vampires yeah. I'm not going to say that they weren't, because here on this podcast, we believe that anything is possible. Exactly. Um, <laughs> but, you know, it's just, there's no hard evidence of it, I'll say that. And yeah. also, kind of during the time that the th- during the time that these rumors got really popular was when Anne Rice was writing her books about the Vampire Chronicles. Oh, so okay. it's kind of like, where were these mm. all throughout history? Like, where were these yeah. stories, you know? Um, today, however, haunting uh, the haunted and vampire tours in New Orleans make a lot of money for their storytelling and all these tourists come and go to the convent and take pictures. Mm-hmm. But for a moment, let's kind of talk about the history of women that were brought from the New World. So, the Casket Girls weren't, as they were called, they were not the first women to come to the New World, obviously, to populate it. The the Canadian colony, which now we know as Quebec, was the first to bring women from the Old World to the New. Apparently, this is back in 1600s, like 1663. The girls were between the ages of 12 and 25, so that was kind of in their prime when they could have multiple children. Mm-hmm. They were, and the kings back then would pick these women as well to come over. They were usually anywhere from like 800 women would come over on the ships to like, you know, 30, 50, somewhere in there. Um, yeah. And so they also, some say that they were already prostitutes the the king just picked these women off the streets but that's not true a lot of them were like from not wealthy families but from like like mid well farmed um, families or something like that um and he wouldn't just like as far as i know in my research i didn't see where he would just like go abduct them from their homes or something like that i think these women like like voluntarily of course if you're gonna go to like i mean who wouldn't i'm going to go to the new world that's exciting you know what am I going to do, just stay on the farm my whole life? Yeah. And a lot of the men were already over there, so it was kind of like slim pickings, slim pickings back home. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, there were also women that were brought to Biloxi, Mississippi, to the French colonies in 1704. And then again in 1721, there were women brought to New Orleans before the Casket Girls. So, uh, you know, what what were those women like? Yeah. <laughs> you know? Um to debunk the vampire casket girls, however, you need to understand that, yes, there were they were probably pale when they arrived because they had been at sea for six months. So it took them six months to travel, which I could not even imagine. Like, yeah, I wouldn't go even. insane. Like, yeah. we were in the house for, like, a couple of weeks because of the coronavirus, like... Two weeks, yeah. Yeah. Like, I would... I was going insane those two weeks, and I had a lot of stuff and snacks and everything. Mm -hmm. I can't imagine what they were going through. The caskets that the girls were carrying freaked the colonists out. However, we know today that they were actually chests. These chests were the chests that they would carry with their clothes, and they were medium size enough for them to carry. Mm -hmm. They were big enough for them to, like, get into. Yeah. Like, to sleep in. But it was just a large chest with all their stuff. But they weren't super huge because I mean they were on a ship they had to have minimal space but they also had to have maximal capacity to carry their shit so yeah. um you know and yeah. that's understandable more understandable like those coffins. chests that I have in there I mean I could get in one of those chests you know yeah. it would be very uncomfortable though um so now the Pope blessing the nails and the bolts is that true? there's no evidence to record that the Pope mm. actually was there at the time However, I mean, it could have been if they were trying to keep it secret. So it was just like rumors that everybody was saying? The third floor of the convent today still has the, like people say, that the third floor still has the caskets. But according to people that work at the convent, there's nothing up there but storage and old archives. Mm. Um, But, you know, they could be lying to cover something up. I'm never going to dismiss anything here. Yeah. I mean, the government lies to us every day about aliens, so it's cool. Um, <laughs> Even though we know. Well, no, they're not lying now, but yeah, they were for they years. Were. And, um, they, and they have no comment on that. And we're like, you know, you've been lying about this. And they're like, no comment. No, we no have comment. it. We just didn't know. Yeah. Like, all right. Right. Cool. JK, you guys. We just found out when you did. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> 
Um, so anyways, yeah, that's the Casket Girls. Um, kind of not as exciting as it could have been, but yeah. I just, <clears throat> I wanted to put the theory out there that they couldn't. Now, as to what happened to the paranormal investigators, if that really was, like, a true thing that happened, um, yeah. no clue. No idea. So if that there wasn't, was, like, actual evidence or anything like that? I mean, I don't know. I don't know their names, and I don't know whether it was true. Or not. I mean, this is back in the seventeen hundreds, so yeah. I mean, it could well, have been. I was talking to her about like there is an episode of Doctor Who, but it's similar. But I think it was in like Italy. I can't remember the episode where it was like vampires, but it was, uh, and there was these girls, and they were like all vampires for a queen. But it was like actually fish people or some fish aliens, and it of sounded very it similar. It sounds like Dr. yeah, <laughs> it's fish actually aliens. fish aliens. Couldn't have just been vampires. Yep. Damn it. <laughs> um, yeah, but that's pretty much it. I mean, we're done. We we are at twenty five minutes. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, but they were really short episode, stories too. Yeah, and. The vampire, I mean, it's hard. I've been wanting to do one about vampires for so long, but it's really hard. Witches and vampires are the hardest ones to do stories on because they're all so short. Because yeah. there's no, like, you know, I mean, there's no actual evidence of, you know, like, I guess, well, we haven't really done one on any other legends, have we? Mm-mm. Well, ghosts, we've done paranormal stuff. And there's evidence of that as far as, like, what the people, the story that the, the families tell. And then, you know, voodoo. Voodoo. That's a real thing. That's a real I kind of want to do religion. A, a story. <laughs> um, there's a story about this woman. I'll just give a little snippet. A woman who um, killed her victims and made soap out of them. Soap? Yep. Soap and, like, pastries and stuff. Never heard of that and I really, it was really interesting. It's, is it was it, kind of short, but it was very interesting. Is it an older story? Like, 1800s? Yeah, like 1800s or, kind of oh, thing. okay. Because I know about, uh, what's her name? Elizabeth Battery? 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 She, like, killed a crap ton of people. Like, torture yeah. chamber style. I think Bailey Sarian did a mm-hmm. one on her. Um, or maybe not. But anyway, she... Yeah, she was nicknamed the Bloody Queen. I think she did. Yeah, I don't know. I because know she was, um, yeah, she was crazy. And she, like, tortured her people. She she actually, <laughs> we're going to have to do one on her. Because actually, it's, it's pretty long. Um, she would bathe in their blood. And yeah, stuff like that. I know what you're talking yeah. about. She actually ended up marrying someone who was like, let's torture together. Fine. Coincidences, yeah. man. <laughs> How do you find these people? I just can't. Yeah. <sighs> I, I believe it a friend was with my in, same uh, interest. I believe it was. Gosh, where was it? I don't even remember. Romania, maybe somewhere in there. I don't know. Yeah. But um, we'll have to do one on her. And then, of course, you know, like Vlad the Impaler. He would impale Spike's heads yeah. and to his kingdom, which people thought he was a vampire, but really he was just an asshole. So I mean, <laughs> I mean, he could have been a vampire, but I'm just saying he was just psycho. Like and he did the, he impaled the sticks, the spikes on the heads and put them outside of his kingdom so that way he would like, you know, show people how badass he was, I yeah. guess. And I bet it was so easy to be a psychopath, especially in the 1800s because there was a lot of war well, and stuff. Also, that's what I said, like. They could just go to war and kill a bunch of people brutally. Yeah, or like with this casket girl thing. Everybody thought they were vampires, but really, death was just occurring around them, and it could have been anything. I yeah. mean, if the blood was being drained from the victims, though, that is a little strange. Um, but I don't that know how was that just would like it might have been just rumors. But that might have been just rumors, or maybe the blood was just there was a lot everywhere, and yeah. they didn't understand the volume of blood in the body, yeah. so they were like, "There's no way all this is." <laughs> they sucked all the blood some out. Had to be and drained. Then some yeah. of it just came out. Yeah, some of it's just splattered here and there. Um, but it also reminded me of that movie, um, From Hell with Johnny Depp. Mm. Such a good one. And, I haven't uh, seen that one. You haven't seen that Mm-mm. one? It's about Jack the Ripper. Really? Yeah, and he falls in love with a redhead. Mm-mm. You never seen that movie? No. Oh, it's good. Um, it's really I'll good. Have to watch one. it. You should watch it. It's on. 
think it's on Hulu at the moment. Or somewhere else. I don't know. Okay, well, I guess we'll hop off here. We tried to make it 30 minutes for you guys. We're yeah. almost there. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry this one was really short, but... Yeah, but this is also a Tuesday episode, so our bonus episodes are short like this. Mm-hmm. Um, I think we might be doing an alien one next, or okay. we might do another serial killer. Not quite sure. Or maybe just murder in general. We've done a lot of murder lately, so I kind of wanted to do something different. Okay. All right. Well, we hope that you guys have a fantastic night and go ahead and hit that like button, leave a comment. Also, send us y'all of your stories. We're still waiting on them stories, mm-hmm. guys. All right. We'll see you guys later. Bye. Bye.